I'll upload this Monday. Your test is going to be, what do we say, Tuesday, right? I just said next week, so probably Tuesday. I hate to get tests on Monday, so we'll review this again Monday. I'll upload it Monday for you guys to kind of study from, and then your test will be Tuesday. So if we look at this, very similar to what your test is going to be. Number one, how long the image capture device is exposed to light? What is that talking about? Shutter speed. Shutter speed, okay. Amount of time, how long, right? That's talking about shutter speed. So how long is that image sensor, your sensor, how long is it exposed to light? Well, it depends on your shutter speed. Okay, how long is it open and closed? Second one here, the size of the opening of the lens to allow light to pass through. What's that one? The size of the opening in the lens that allows light to come through. Aperture, right? Last but not least, sensitivity of the capture device to light. ISO. ISO. That's your ISO. Okay. All right. So here we just talked about this today. If the metered reading indicates a reading of 204.0, 200 is talking about what reading? 200 would be talking about what reading? What is that? Is that an aperture, an ISO, or shutter speed? I'm going to say stay away from ISO. <laughs> it is an ISO reading, but the, the thing I try to show you guys this and I try to get you to do this with is you'll read. Whenever you're reading about shutter speed, you'll read this. Oh, I can't even type here. You'll read 1 200th, right? But whenever you're looking through your lens, how does it actually read? Do you see any ones in there? No, you just see 60, 80, 100, 125, 1 200. So you just see solid numbers. They get rid of the one. So that's kind of why I throw this in there. I want you guys to be aware of it. Whenever you see in that metered reading, and it says, you know, 400, 4.0, 200, 4.0, so on and so forth. That's talking about your shutter speed. Okay? And the 4.0 is talking about what? Aperture, right? 4.0 would be an aperture reading. All right. To freeze action shots, you would need a large or a small aperture opening. To freeze action shots, large or small, for your aperture. What do you guys think? You need a large aperture opening. And guys, this is the information that you have to kind of know. So if I'm out there and I'm shooting an action shot, right off the bat, I want to know, okay, I'm going to adjust my shutter all, or my uh, aperture all the way down to get a large opening. So I have to do that before I even adjust my shutter speed. You understand that? So this information like this is very important for you to know. If I just shot a portrait of somebody and I had my aperture at 8, and then I go to shoot an action shot of somebody, well, first thing I want to adjust would be the aperture because I want as big as I could get it so that I could freeze that action shot. Understand that? So it's very important. All right, give an example of that size of that opening. What would be an example of that? 2.8. Okay, 2.0, 2.8, 1.8, 3.5 even for our cameras that we use. Okay, now this is the one I told you guys is a little different because everybody on this, and this is like a trick question. This is my tri trick question, and yes, it will be on a test. Okay, so what is my trick question? <laughs> to shoot lightning, you need a fast or a slow shutter speed. What do you think that is? Talked about this yesterday. Everybody always says fast, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Your finger is not as fast as a bolt of lightning. So you have to have a slow shutter because you hit the shutter, it stays open for, let's say, 30 seconds to a minute, and then it closes. Understand that? Because you don't know when the lightning is going to hit, so you like got to leave it open for a long time. Hopefully lightning hits whenever you have that aperture or the uh, shutter open. 
Okay? Got to understand that? Because you don't know when lightning's going to hit, right? You don't have a timer that says it's going to hit. No. Can't do that. So you have to leave the app, you have to leave the shutter open 30 seconds, a minute, whatever it takes, and then close it and hope the lightning strikes within that point. Okay? So it is a slow shutter. To capture lightning, you need a slow shutter speed. Give an example of a slow shutter speed. One second, two seconds, three seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you want to put there. Okay, anything in seconds. Everybody just hear that? Anything in seconds, put seconds for that answer. I'll accept five seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. Okay. All right. A couple of you guys get confused on this one too. To shoot a dark night shot of the city skyline, your ISO should be high or low. To shoot a dark shot or a dark night shot of the city skyline, your ISO should be high or low. This is like a double-sided question. And I, I put these on here, guys, because this is your your brain's got to process this. This is your thought process that I'm trying to test. So there's two things that I put in here. One's a trick, the other one is what the setting's got to be for. So whenever I put into this question, dark night. Everybody thinks what? It's going to be dark. I'm going to need ISO help. Not the case. Okay? Because what are you shooting? What are you shooting? The city skyline, right? So the city skyline has to have deep depth of field, doesn't it? It's got to be focused the whole way through the image. And what do we say? If we want to have everything in focus and we want to have a deep depth of field, that that uh, building that's way back in the back of the city, you want that to be in focus. If I give ISO help and a high ISO here, won't it degrade the quality of that building? Won't it like pixelate it so bad that it's not going to be a good photo? So what I like to tell everybody is this. Anytime you're shooting any type of a landscape, a skyline, anything that the whole image needs to be in focus, minimum ISO. Minimum ISO. Okay? So it needs to be low ISO setting. What does ISO stand for again? Sensitivity. Image sensitivity of light. It's the sensitivity of that sensor. All right, so give an example of that ISO. That would be 100. Okay, especially night shots, guys. If you shoot anything dark and you get pixelation, it's going to show more than something that's bright. Okay, we'll go over this, but this kind of gets you started. All right, to blur water coming off a waterfall, you need a large or small aperture opening. To blur water coming off a waterfall, you need a large or a small aperture opening. What do you guys think? What do you guys say, large? Okay. Remember we talked about the Libra scale, and we said if the aperture is big, it allows a lot of light in. Your shutter speed's got to be what fast, right? And we said if the aperture opening's smaller, you let less light in. Your shutter speed's got to be slow, right? So think about that. You want to blur something. What type of shutter speed do you want? Slower shutter speed, right? So where should your aperture be? If your shutter speed's slow, your aperture is closed, right? If your shutter speed's fast, your aperture is open. A lot more light in. So with this, we want to blur water coming off a waterfall. We want a slower shutter speed, which means our aperture has got to be small. Fast. Shutter speed, large aperture. Slow shutter speed, small aperture. Understand that? It's the Libra scale. Okay, one goes up, the other one's got to go down. All right, so if we gave example of the aperture opening in the question above, a larger aperture opening would be what? F8. 
18, F22, somewhere up in that number, correct? <clears throat> okay. To freeze action shots, you will need a faster, slow shutter speed. You guys better know that one. Oh. Huh? Slower. Faster. Fast shutter speed. Okay. To freeze shots, to freeze the action, you need a fast shutter. All right, give an example of a fast shutter. We just gave you guys a example today. Anything above what? One four hundred. Okay, anything above one four hundred? One five hundred, one six hundred, one one twelve hundred, one fourteen hundreds, one sixty four hundreds, anything above there. Okay, to shoot a night shot of the city skyline, your aperture should be large or small. Once again, this is a double-sided question. So you really got to read this. To shoot a night shot of the city skyline, your aperture should be large or small. This is what's going to throw everybody off once again. Night shot. As soon as you think night shot, you're thinking dark, right? As soon as you think dark, you think, oh, I got to let the aperture opening to let more light in, right? Wrong. What kind of picture are we shooting what's the overall purpose the city skyline right so what do we want to do with that depth of field everything should be in focus correct if you guys go with a large aperture opening it's going to blur out the background right so you're shooting a skyline you need to have a small aperture opening okay Small aperture, that way everything is in focus. Example of that would be F22, 20, 18. Okay. All right. F is aperture. Oh. Yeah, F is aperture. Yeah. This is, this is, you know. Why did I throw some of this stuff up there for you guys earlier, like last week? And I said, you know, it's kind of important that you kind of get started with this. Well, if you guys look at last week's stuff that I put up there, here we go. And we look at these charts. These charts help you understand that more. These charts help you understand, hey, here's my depth of field. What should it be? F16, F18, F20, F2, F2.8. Right here's my movement blur. Well, the least amount of movement blur is one one thousandth. The most amount of movement blur is like one tenth. Right? Has that in those charts? So study these charts. Okay. Same thing here. Lighter or darker photo. Same thing with this one. The sizes for your apertures. Sizes for your apertures. You know, it talks about larger aperture, where that it's at. More light is allowed to hit the sensor, shallow depth of field, deep depth of field. So all that is in there. Okay? I'm just trying to make some kind of association with that. I think I said it the first day of class. Aperture is totally backwards. It really is. And there is reasoning behind it. If you really want to get into lenses and how they react... Okay, but association, whenever people think of a big aperture opening, they think, oh, it should be 22. That's not the case. It's opposite. It's two. And they think a small aperture opening, oh, it's small. It's got to be a small number. No, it's a bigger number. So it's actually opposite. And most students get confused with that until you actually you know, are commonly using this a, a good bit. So it's almost like... Um, associating yourself with using the, the sizes and the symbols. So it is confusing at first. So believe me, guys, we're probably going to take this test again. I'm just telling you now. Because most of the kids that come through here and they take the, uh, the first two tests, the, camera, the first camera sim test and the first um, aperture ISO shutter speed test, usually they don't do so well on it. Okay. So I hope you guys are different, but most most kids, you know, that thought process is a little different 
and you have to get used to it. So we'll cover this. This is why we spend so much time doing this. It takes a while to get used to what we're talking about. It takes a while to get into that thought process of saying, I need an action shot. I got to have a large aperture. Or I need to blur water. I need a small aperture. And I can't go below 160th, and I can't go below 1 400th, or it's going to blur in an action shot. So there's things that trigger what you guys are thinking about. And it's going to take a while to get that, but eventually we'll get there. Okay? So, like I said, next week we'll cover this a little bit more on Monday. I'll upload these for you guys. The camera sim stuff to practice it. I'll upload that for you. We'll get into camera sim next week. Um, you guys will have some stuff doing camera sim next week. And uh, I'll see how you guys do on a test, and we'll kind of go from there. All right?